Whenever SG-1 needs expert advice on traveling through time and space, they turn to the best, the brightest, and the most beautiful. But don't let this officer's looks fool you. I take it you're Colonel O'Neill. Captain Samantha Carter reporting, sir. Amanda Tapping as Samantha Carter is, she couldn't be more perfect for the part because we needed a woman who could, who could be very strong, uh, who you could buy as a soldier, um, who's you know, had combat training and actually been in wars, and who is um, a brilliant scientist and who is a beautiful woman. And finding an actress that can do all three of those things convincingly is very difficult. I've practically memorized your report from the first mission. I'd like to think I've been preparing for this all my life. I didn't realize when I took it on that it was going to be such a, an action-adventure sci-fi show. You know, I thought it was going to be more intellectually based in terms of my character being, you know, the scientist and I'd be struggling with these great scientific problems. But now on the show, I mean, it's become this great physical show for me, which I, I never imagined myself doing. Come on, let's move! Come on, come on! Go, go! So for me, that's a great challenge. It's also a great gift to, you know, to be given something like this as a woman, especially, to be given this. We kicked their asses. They had asses? <laughs> The thing for me with this character is she's a cross between Jack O'Neill and Daniel Jackson. She's the perfect hybrid of these two men. She's got a military base. She's a captain in the Air Force, fought in the Gulf War. Have you ever pulled out of a simulated bombing run in an F-16 at 8 plus Gs? Yes. She's also a theoretical astrophysicist, so her scientific background is very strong. Look at this. You can actually see the fluctuations in the event horizon. So she skirts this line, which for me creates great conflict to play because it's, you know, do I go the scientific route or do I stick with military protocol? And so she gets to, to play opposite both men and have strengths with each of them. I'm an Air Force officer just like you are, Colonel. And just because my reproductive organs are on the inside instead of the outside doesn't mean I can't handle whatever you can handle. In the pilot episode, the writers gave Amanda a brief moment to poke fun at Richard Dean Anderson's former television series. It took us 15 years and three supercomputers to MacGyver a system for the gate on Earth. In reality, she has nothing but praise for her co-star. He's really lovely to work with. He's got a great sense of humor. He's very generous and he's fun. And I mean, having had the amount of experience that he's had on series, he really looks out for us and knows, you know, knows when to fight and knows when not to. And you know, so he's sort of our champion of causes, and he's a lovely man. He really is. What you doing? So I think we're all very lucky. Not only that, but we have a, we have a great crew. And I think the sense of humor on this show is what keeps us going. Because we work really long hours and really long days, and it's a huge show. But everyone has a great sense of humor. In the episode Point of View, Amanda got the unique opportunity to play her double, thanks to a bizarre twist of fate. We made a good team, Major. Yeah, we did, Doctor. Plus, your hair's kind of grown on me. <laughs> Pardon the pun. This should be a show that entertains and that allows people to think beyond what they normally think about. You know, maybe take you to a different place and make you ask questions. But, you know, is that possible? Yeah, it is. And action! Working on a series with such high technical demands can take its toll on actors. But Amanda loves the challenge. The hard part on film is that you, you really can't fake anything out because the camera sees it. So you just sort of have to jump in, jump in. Almost into the four years. And, and let it happen to you. Believe it. I mean, it's hard, certainly, and especially on a set this huge with this many people to sort of let everything go, let your logical side go and go, okay, we've just come to this planet uh, inhabited by, I don't know, gnomes. But you have, to, you have to believe it. For the sake of the Asgard, we must not fail. No pressure. You know, just to, to act in front of a blue screen is kind of weird, but you just you have to let it go. You have to, you have to find that part of yourself that believes it that little kid part of yourself almost. I mean, like even doing the war scenes, you know, when we, in the pilot we had these big shoot 'em up bombs going off. And, and it was, you know, I turned to, to Michael Shanks and I said, this is just like being a kid, except we're getting paid to play war, you know? And our guns look better than the sticks we used to carry around the alleyways. We need. 
If given the chance in real life, would Amanda Tapping embark on a real journey to worlds unknown? If they found a Stargate today, would I go through it? Yes. Be amazing. Not that everyone would. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't, but certainly I would. I'd jump at the chance.